We're live. Hi. Hey. <laughs> um, hello. Good evening. Good morning, wherever you're from. Uh, I'm Morgan, and I'd like to welcome welcome you to this chat of Coracle Live Books, Bards, and Ballads. And um, Coracle is brought to you by the Sisterhood of Avalon and is our online ongoing educational platform. So tonight I'm going to be chatting with one of our sisters, Suzanne O'Gara. Hi. <laughs> and uh, this is going to be a really, really good conversation, I think. So I'm just going to dive right in because we have a lot to talk about. And I'm just going to start with asking Suzanne to give us, um, you know, tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, thank you. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to be here. Um, yeah, I'm blah, blah, blah. Okay, so, <laughs> so I'm Suzanne O'Gara, and um, I have been part of Sisterhood of Avalon since early 2017. So I just had my little five year anniversary. And um, uh, let's see, I live in Western Massachusetts now um, for almost two years now. I moved here in 2020 during the pandemic. And um, previous to that, I was out in the Phoenix, Arizona area, which is where I um, got my certification in Western herbalism. And that was at the Southwest Institute of Healing Arts. And um, but prior to that, I, I am from New York originally. So I grew up on Long Island. I went to college upstate. I was a music major. I was a vocal performance major at Ithaca College. Um, I was a coloratura soprano in New York City all throughout my 20s, and then um, I decided that I wanted to make a big switch, and that was when I, you know, moved and, and studied herbalism and um, met my husband out, out in Arizona. So, um, so now I'm here in Massachusetts with, uh, with him and my two children, and um, I am now running my business that had been online for like 10 years also as a brick and mortar shop now. So um, that opened last summer um, here in Greenfield, Massachusetts. And uh, yeah, it's super exciting. And um, Avalon uh, and the concept of the priestesses of Avalon has been my guiding force since I was about 23. And um, it's what inspired my business. It's what inspired me to get certified as an herbalist. Um, it, it, pretty much drives everything that I do. So um, so I'm super, super happy to be part of the sisterhood and, and to be doing this here with you tonight, Morgane. So, yay. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. We've been talking about it for months and I'm, I'm glad that, that it's finally here. Um, we chatted just a little bit before we started and you were talking about how you were trying to do everything separately, but you came to this point where everything came together. Would you like to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, definitely. Yes, there were probably two key points that I can think of, but um, but yeah. So um, when I was younger, um, and I and I made the decision to to go to college to pursue the the music degree. Um, I I think it's especially in like in classical music, but probably several other um, intense career paths like that. Um, there's definitely a lot of pressure for good reason to just completely focus on that, to not think about anything else, talk about anything else, do anything else. Um, but around that time, well, I should say right after, pretty shortly after I graduated um, from Ithaca College was when I fell into Avalon and paganism and witchcraft. So um, that just opened up a lot for me. Like just, yeah, just started really seeing so much more in the world than I had before. And um, and I was always, but I was always someone who, um, you know, did multiple things, felt pulled to do multiple things. So, um, but yeah, so in opera there, there is a tremendous amount of, of pressure to just do that and also that was in the early 2000s so i think wicca was fairly trendy at that time but it was still very like kind of apologetic and very 
you know, you definitely separate, like you definitely, you have that part of your life, you have, you know, your witchy stuff or your priestess stuff and, and, and you have your career and, um, and you keep those identities separate. Oftentimes they're separate groups of friends or, you know, whatever. And um, so there was uh, definitely a lot of emphasis on that. And I always struggled with that. And I, as, as I was pursuing singing through my twenties, I still was then like, learning witchcraft and and learning about Avalon and developing all of that, developing psychic gifts, learning how to read tarot cards. I ended up starting to do that professionally pretty early on. Um, and then I also, around that same time, around the age of 23, um, I'm almost 43 now, so this was almost 20 years ago, um, that also was when I discovered belly dance. And, um, and even as a, I was a voice major in college, but I still chose to take a dance minor. So I, I still was like, you know, I was doing multiple things. And so I had done um, other forms of dance, but I got completely hooked on belly dance. And then I started layering that in. And, um, you know, it was like people thought I was crazy for trying to, but I never thought it was weird that I had all of those things going on because one day it dawned on me and this was i think when i was working at a tea shop um, that was on saint mark's place at the time um that i was like you know if the proverbial priestesses of avalon were here now were alive now um this is how they'd be they would be doing all of these arts there would have been you know, they would have been trained, right, in the bardic arts of, of music and dance and, and ways to tell our stories. And they would have been trained in ritual and divination and probably astrology and... And, um, and herbal medicine. And also herbs, right, exactly. So I was, I was just going to say, and that was kind of when I just really started... Um, <clears throat> I started off in tea houses um, as a way to supplement my income as a singer. Um, because I was I was teaching and, and you know doing shows I was doing musicals as well as operas and um, I just uh, I started like going off book when <laughs> when the owners weren't around I would just make up teas like somebody would come in and they'd be like oh my god like I don't know if this guy is gonna call back or I have this grad school application that I keep procrastinating on or whatever their issue was and I would just be like. I know the tea for you. And I would just make up something for them. Yeah. And, and that was like, I started getting the nickname, the tea witch, um, which I can't use because I think there's someone else who's got that copyrighted. There's like another tea witch on the internet, but people used to start calling me the tea witch. And like, um, and then I started like using herbs and I'm like, you know, I think I've seen this herb that we're using now in this medicinal tea, but they had it around the corner at enchantments, you know, at the, at the witchy shop in, in the East village. Mm -hmm. And I'd be like, Oh, okay. So you can ingest this. It's not just for magic. And I started trying to read up and learn. And, um, and then people sometimes would ask me, Oh, like I heard this herb could, um, you know, raise my blood pressure. Is that true? And I'd be like, Oh, I don't know. And so I was like, I need to know these things. I want to know these things. And that was when I also was like, this is a totally Avalon thing to do. This is completely, you know, I don't know. I guess I always just thought, I guess I had just worked so hard on separating those parts of myself and those parts of my brain that like, I just never thought there might be a way that I could just be, you know, that I could just be, that I could be all of those things. So um, yeah, when I had the realization about that, it wasn't long before I realized that that's, what I really wanted to be doing was intuiting those tea blends for people and helping people that way and not going to another audition. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so that was the first dawning and um, that was right before I turned 30. And um, so I made the choice to like leave New York and I moved to Arizona to study herbalism down there. And, um, and that's, yeah, that's a whole other story, but, um, I found the right place to be. I had a short story. I had auditioned for the graduate voice department at ASU, which is also in Tempe. Mm -hmm. And, um, it was not accepted. 
Uh, and, but I, when I was waiting outside um, before my audition, I kept smelling the orange blossoms because it was orange blossom season down there, which is like the most intoxicating, it's the best thing in the world. And just before that, I had made this like sacral chakra self-confidence blend of fragrance for myself that had neroli in it. And I was like, why does this feel so familiar? And so I felt like I was supposed to be there because of that like healing blend that I had already made back in New York and then smelling it in real life. And then when I got my rejection letter, I was like, this doesn't, I still feel like I'm supposed to be down there. But okay. And then the following week, maybe not even a week, I found out that there was a school of herbalism and aromatherapy and everything like a few blocks away from ASU. So I was like, oh my God, that's what I'm supposed to do. So yeah, so I went down there and um, after I graduated, I launched Alchemy of Avalon online and I had made um, like, I had like five blends, like five original tea blends. And I still have all of those blends on my website to this day. And um, a friend of mine at the time was like a chef at a nice restaurant in Scottsdale. So they had my teas at that restaurant. So that was kind of how I got started. Yeah. 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 So, um, so that was the initial, you know, the initial, the initial push. Um, and I still continued to belly dance while I was down there in Arizona. Um, but I was also, yeah. And when I was down there, um, I wasn't doing any singing or, or voice teaching. So I needed a day job and I started working in a bank oh. and it was, you know, I'm not, I'm not knocking it. I learned a lot. Like there are things that I now know about personal finance that I never would have known, but um, it was really rough. It was really hard for me to really push myself into that mold every day. And I did that for like five years. That's really stifling. It's really stifling. I always found that working in an office was so stifling and I couldn't wait to get the hell out. Oh man. Yes, exactly. Yeah. 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 Uh, it was, it was really hard. Sometimes it was so stressful. I didn't realize how stressed out I was until after, until after I left. But, um, but yeah, I had started the online business and I was doing all of this belly dancing and teaching belly dance and um, growing that career. Um, I, I was teaching at a lot of festivals down there and, and that was going really well too. But um, uh, I guess with the mentality that I had to force myself into all the time as a banker, I really drifted. I drifted away. Um, I, I, I was still practicing witchcraft to some degree um, with my husband sometimes. Um, but I, I definitely drifted away from Avalon for many years mm -hmm. and also from my herbalism almost to the point where I stopped even using it or thinking like I would make the tea still, but I don't know. It was weird. It was a weird time. And um, I guess I didn't start almost like utilizing my knowledge with that and, and kind of like believing in it again until I had had like thyroid surgery after I had my daughter. So, um, so yeah. And, and so I didn't really come back to it. And this is kind of one of the story that I wanted to tell that I mentioned before we got started. Um, so Sean and I, um, uh, we got married, we didn't get married until 2016. Uh, but we'd been together a lot longer than that. And, um, we did go to Glastonbury for our honeymoon. And it had been 11 years since I had been. I, w I went once in, 20, in 2005 um, after, after a singing gig um, that I had over in Bulgaria of all places. And then I, when I traveled back to the States, I stopped in, in Glastonbury. But um, so it had been 11 years. Um, and it felt like, I just thought I would never make it back there. I just thought, okay, it was like a once in a lifetime thing. I'm, I'm gonna die and not go back or whatever. And it felt so far away. It just always felt so impossible. And then when we went in 2016, um, we were meditating at the chalice well, uh, at the actual, you know, the famous well. Um, okay. And, um, 
you know, you know how it goes, like when the world around you disappears. Yes. And it gets all quiet and you seem to be in sort of this tunnel, almost the feeling of like a cave or being held in like a womb space. And um, I had this vision that of course didn't make sense right away, but felt the power of it nonetheless, right? And I had this vision of me holding these two big ceramic bowls. And the bowls had water, were both pretty full with water. And I was trying to, trying to balance them. And I was trying to, and they, they were, you know, it was splashing all over the place. It wasn't, it wasn't balanced. And um, I couldn't figure out what to do. And then all of a sudden got this like, I don't know, I guess you could say the voice of the goddess or of the mother or, or the spirit of place. But she told me to place the blue bowl in the middle of the green bowl. Okay. Yeah. So, oh, I don't know if I said that. So one was green, like a, like kind of like the color I'm wearing now, like an earthy green. And one was this beautiful blue, this deep, like the SOA blue basically. And, um, did you guys know we have our own blue? It's like Tiffany blue, SOA blue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I, I, in this vision, felt myself placing, listening to her instructions and placing the blue bowl inside the green bowl, which was slightly larger as it turned out. And everything all of a sudden balanced perfectly. And I realized not long after that the blue, the blue bowl represented Avalon. And then the green was the mundane. The green was all of the mundane, the, the you know, the day jobs and the mothering and just the chaos of life. And that by making Avalon the central axis in my life, that it would bring things into balance. And that I don't know, like that 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 was what I needed to do. I needed to make Avalon the central axis of my life and, and in turn of my family's life. And, um, you know, I didn't, I didn't know what that meant at the time, but I wrote it all down. Yeah. And not long after I got home, um, I chatted with Anwen. Um, Cause yeah, so she and I crossed paths in Arizona. So that's how I know her. And we were in a belly dance. Plus, plus the belly dancing, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And so um, it's a really cute story. I guess I was standing in front of her in class and she saw my, so my lower back tattoo. Yes, I have a lower back tattoo and I'm from Long Island. <laughs> um, is, is a triple goddess, you know, a triple moon symbol with the center one being the Vesica Pisces. So mm -hmm. she saw that in class and she was like, ah, so we chatted. So anyway, so at this point she's now in Oregon and I'm back from my honeymoon and I'm like, hey, so I saw this thing and I'm, I'm looking for ways to, you know, incorporate Avalon into my life some more. I know you're part of Sisterhood of Avalon. Maybe I should join that. What classes should I take? Yada, yada. And I'm telling her about this blue bowl thing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling her about this blue bowl thing. And she's like, that's a real thing and she's like there is a glastonbury blue bowl she's like it's in the museum at the chalice well or whatever and i'm like what this is a there was an actual bowl like like a few feet from where i was sitting are you effing kidding me and i freaked out and she goes yeah i have a blog post about it here you go here's the link and i'm like <laughs> we were freaking out right now just thinking about it and uh yeah so so i guess the glastonbury blue bowl yeah came to me in a vision or something i don't know whatever oh, it was crazy so she told me about that and i was like well shit now i need to do something about this. i'm not gonna play around anymore avalon okay i hear you so you know so from there i realized uh you know i, I needed to really amp it up so after that i, I joined soa i did the orientation that year at um at Samhain, sorry, I know we don't call it Samhain, but I'm not gonna say Welsh words on here. I'm just not gonna do it. <laughs> so yeah, thank you, that. Yeah. <laughs> I can say Vladiawith and Arianfrod. <laughs> so I'm getting better. Um, but yeah, so I, I joined SOA and that was also when I connected with um, 
Demi Fox, who now runs Morgan Le Fay Mystery School, and, and, I, and I work for her doing her herb craft section of that program, and like, it all came together. I connected with you guys, I connected with Demi, I, um, I oh, and then I also, um, completely like rebranded and re-upped. Oh, so the other weird thing was at the time of my, like a couple days before I left for my wedding, because I was living in Arizona, but we got married in Salem. <laughs> and um, of course, of course. <laughs> like you do, um, my website, like something happened and it stopped working completely. Like, I don't know. So it, it was almost like, now I can look back and be like, maybe that was kind of a sign that I needed like to start fresh. So Anwin actually, uh, in early 2017, we talked about, and, and we did, she re redesigned my website and, uh, you know, re rebooted, rebranded all of that. So that was from there on, I started just adding products and adding products and, um, you know, uh, learning how to update it myself and just getting more serious and doing more like, you know, pop-up markets and things like that. And, um, that was, it, it just was like the beginning of, what brought us here to Massachusetts, what allowed me to start carving out the life that would allow me to open up my shop finally, because the intention was that I wanted to open up the shop back in 2009 when I left New York. That was like, because I was working at those little tea shops being like, I want to do this. I want to, if somebody asks me, are you the owner? I want to say yes. So, you know, so it was such a long, long unfolding, but. Um, so yeah. what did you decide on? Massachusetts is it just the proximity to Salem or yes and no um so I guess like the fantasy is like practical magic without the curse right so um you know we got married in Salem and I was like we were um I think in like 2019 was when we decided we wanted to try and buy a house somewhere and at first we looked at northern Arizona we wanted to go someplace cooler than the Phoenix area so that people would actually want to drink the tea um, you know, what's a cool place where, where the shop could thrive. And, um, we liked the idea of Flagstaff or Colorado, but those areas had already gotten way too expensive. You know, it just didn't seem really worth it. And, um, one night we were zillowing for fun and I'm like, Oh yeah, let's see what Salem, Massachusetts. Obviously I knew it was going to be like, you know, way crazy expensive. But, um, so then we looked at that for a second, ha ha ha. And then, I'm like, just for the hell of it, let's take the word Salem out and just put Massachusetts. And so then we saw all this availability within our price range here in Western Mass. And I remembered, yeah, I had visited this area in high school a bunch of times because my mom's best friend, since they were in high school, who I call my aunt, um, she lives in Deerfield. And okay. Yeah, so we used to drive up from Long Island to visit her sometimes. And I was like, wait a second, I know that area. It's totally great. It's got, you know, as the kids get older, they'll have choices for college. And, um, but it's, it's, it's rural, but it's not in the middle of nowhere. There's plenty of places to hike and everything that we wanted. So, well, has Yankee Candle. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah, it does have Yankee Candle. <laughs> That's all I know in Deerfield. <laughs> my mom's delight. But um, yeah, so uh, yeah. And it was cool because at that time also, my husband, um, he's a chef and he's awesome. And he was like applying for all these chef jobs out in AZ and he kept getting lowballed or he would go through four interviews and then not get the job or whatever. And it just was not working out. And he applied for one job out here in Massachusetts and got it got his asking salary, everything like right away. So we were like, okay, like this is where we're supposed to go. So that's great. Yeah. That's great. So let's talk about your store a little bit and all the goodies. Yes. Um, and actually if anybody, if you have questions that you want to ask Suzanne, stick them in the chat and um, I will make sure. That I don't know if I, am I should I be looking at the chat or should I not look at? Yeah, I'll do it. Okay. So I can't. I can't type right here. <laughs> I in in regard to the blue bowl story. So, like a year or two after that happened, 
I decided I wanted to try to find one. And I even found what, so this is by, it's got blue inside green, just like the way it looked in my vision. So I found this on Etsy, um, but yeah, I, and if anyone wants to know where it's from, I, I can mention that later because she's awesome. This lady lives in Glastonbury, but um, but yeah, so I was like, I have, you know, kind of what I saw. I found it in real life eventually. So yeah, so I'll put some tea in here for you guys to look at if you want. And I just put your website in the chat. So everybody go there. Yeah, thank you. Bye. <laughs> Lionel Richie. Um, so here's, this is the Avalon tea. Okay. It's so pretty. <laughs> it is pretty. Can you smell it? <laughs> yes, I can. <laughs> so, yeah, so you've got some big old apple chunks here and um so the base of this one is um it's an apple rooibos so okay. yeah rooibos comes from south africa not the uk but um it's a it's there's no caffeine but it's a full-bodied herb so it stands up to milk and seems like regular tea um so it's an apple rooibos with the dried apples and then there's also rose petals and lavender and hawthorn berries oh, um, nice. Yeah, if I had to pick a, a tree that I connect the most with and I feel is my Avalon tree, it would be Hawthorne. Um, and I think that's also my Celtic tree, like there's the Celtic tree astrology. I think my birthday falls into the Hawthorne season. So yeah, um, so that's my Avalon tea and it's, it's just lovely. Um, I feel like I'm doing an infomercial, but that's okay. <laughs> Is that the one that sold out the Avalon tea? No, that's the Lady of the Lake. Okay, yeah. So, okay. yeah. so big thank you to Jenna and everyone who mentioned it last weekend during Avacon. So a bunch of people bought Lady of the Lake for me like that weekend, and now I have none. So thank you. <laughs> so uh, I'll, I'll be ordering more supplies, and I'll have more back in the shop very soon. But um, yeah, so I also um, – I'm so I've got like – at least 35, maybe closer to 40 varieties of loose leaf tea um, in my shop. Um, and some of them are Avalon inspired. So not just that one, but also of course, Lady of the Lake with Avalon mm -hmm. tea. I have another one um, inspired by Morgana as healer of Avalon. So that one is called Morgan healer of Avalon, kind of a long name, but um, so that one's got some really nice um, antivirals uh, stuff for colds and flu, like elderflower, and lemon balm and self heal. So um, I don't have that one here tonight, but, um, and then the one that I just released today is kind of indirectly Avalonian. Um, it's called Beltane Tea on my website, but I feel like it's unofficial name is like May Queen or May Queen Green. Um, and it's, Definitely inspired also by like Rhiannon and Bloodioth and um, Guinevere to a degree, you know, just the Celtic May Queens. And um, so, yeah, so that one's also got Hawthorne, um, the berries. And then um, I'll, I think I'll soon be sourcing some uh, Hawthorne blossoms as well. So that'll go in there when I get them. And then, um, well, everybody in the chat is raving about your tea. Oh, uh -huh. okay. Well, I, I can't look, I don't want to look. So, <laughs> yeah, no. Um, so, but so other, yeah. So other than the teas, so, you know, so I'm also a certified herbalist. So I make tinctures and salves and, um, and, and fragrance uh, blending was actually kind of like what got me into herbalism oddly. So like originally I, I went, and I thought I'll study some aromatherapy and some herbalism. Um, and like, and I also had also done a bunch of waitressing and cocktail waitressing in New York City. Um, so I got a pretty decent wine palette at the time. Uh, and I think I still do. But so that's a lot like, like wine and tea and perfuming, honestly, and music are a lot alike. Um, and that's a whole other lecture maybe, but 
uh, so I so I do a lot of that too. So um, so I have like uh, I do a Morgan Le Fay perfume. I'm taking off the cap as if you can smell it, but um. <laughs> I think it was Pam said it was Pam said she wants smell smell o vision. Yeah, <laughs> I would, definitely now that would be a good thing to have. Um, yeah. If my dogs were here, maybe not. But um, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, the Morgan Le Fay perfume is definitely more sorceress. You know, Morgan Le Fay is the Arthurian bad girl. It's a it's an autumnal, mysterious scent. There's oud and campfire, and um, it's got apple for sure, and some rosemary and, and stuff like that. But it's it's definitely more witchy um, than like the tea blend, for example, that's named after her. Um, you know, I've got like fun little lip balms in the shop. So here's my I'm sorry about this lighting. Ugh. Yeah, so there's the fairy's kiss, and it's um, sealed shut. Apparently, sorry, it's got a lavender tint to it. So, um, so that's really pretty. And then um, I also do essential oil sprays. So, like these are the two that are pretty much always in my shop. But I have others that I sell too. Like I have one for Breed for Bridget. Mm -hmm. um, and then, um, yeah, the, so I, I, th I brought this one because I thought you guys might like the picture. That's uh, a picture I took outside the White Spring in Glastonbury. Nice. Yeah, so um, that's my Grounded Goddess spray. Um, it's, it's for all of you who want something grounding but don't like patchouli. I happen to love patchouli, but... Yeah, me too. Well, I guess don't. So that one's got cedarwood and rosewood and also rose and clary sage and vetiver and bergamot. So, um, so yeah, it's soft and it's lovely. And then the um, Hecate spray is also on the autumnal and witchy side. And that's got like a Popinox and Styrax and clove and stuff like that. So yeah, it's really good. It's good for protection, boundaries, magic, power. So a little spicy. Mm -hmm. the coat? Yeah, okay. Yeah. And I don't know if you're familiar with Styrax, um, Styrax benzoin. It's um, sometimes called liquid amber. Okay. Um, yeah, it's really, um, it's got a sweetness. It's like a, you know, it's a balsam, I think. Uh, it's a resin. Yeah, it's got a woody sweetness. Um, and there's also, you can sometimes find it as an incense and it's like black, like black Styrax. And so it's really like, it's good for any dark goddess work shadow work, um, you know, work with uh, Morgana or probably Carriagewin, that would be good. So yeah, that's, that's, yeah. A, that's one of my favorite resins for sure. Um, and then I will be kind of, so here's a sneak preview. So you, um, oh. Hello, Zach, Suzanne, Michelle wants to know if you have any suggested products for improving mood, cause she's stuck in the mundane office world. I feel you. I feel you. I would do. So any of these really could be good, but I would either, I would say if not the grounded goddess, this one might be a little soft, but actually the breeds blessing, which I don't have with me here, that has a lot of citrus in it. Um, so it's very uplifting and brightening. So I would go for that one. That would be my number one choice. There's grapefruit and ylang ylang and lemon balm in there. Yeah, and then there's also some pine and rosemary. So it's a little bit of the earthy, foresty stuff, but a lot of citrus. So um, I would do that, or I would do, I would, I would stealthily brew yourself some tea, maybe at the office. Um, and so there's, you know, lots of, yeah, lots of different teas that can uplift and improve your mood, especially if you're stuck um, in a mundane you know, a very mundane world. Um, so I, I would say like, let's chat. Like if you want to message me. Um, oh, so side note, I love doing custom blends. Originally I thought that that was going to be my entire business model was just doing custom blends. But um, so if you want something like that, you can choose the name and I customize it to like either your magical or spiritual goals or physical health goals. Like I do all of that. Um, I do consultations also like, herbalist consultations for medicinal um, support. Um, so that's also an option. But um, if it's just like 
you want to do a fun tea that's going to help you like connect to who you are and connect to your practice even when you're in that environment i can make you something special too so that's great um marion mentions that she sprays your grounded goddess in her space Yay. Every Hi, evening yes. for relaxation Yay! yeah the grounded goddess is um it can that's one of those ones that can go either way it can be uplifting but it's also obviously grounding and it's soft like that rose and the rosewood and the cedarwood is it's it's very soft so yeah all right michelle said she's going to message you yeah we'll chat that'll be great that'll be great Definitely. so is there any other product that you'd like to share with us before i want to talk to you about singing with randy yes um yeah i was going to give you guys a sneak preview I thought it would be fun. Uh, so this is a product that is not coming out technically until like early June, late May, early June. Um, so I'm making another spray. Um, I don't know why I didn't do this before, but it's a Priestess of Avalon spray. So it probably won't be in a brown bottle though. So this is just like my, you know, my rough draft. But um, this is... I mean, of course, anyone can use it and, you know, it'll help. But I especially had priestesses in mind when I made this because of all the work that we do. Um, it's wonderful for, um, okay, so yes, we all learn how to maybe put up our energetic shields and, and take care of ourselves to not take on the energy or the stories of our clients that we help, whether that's in, you know, herbalism, Reiki healing, music, whatever, but we're all in service, right? So we're all helping people in whatever our modalities are. I personally still sometimes struggle with taking on that stuff, especially if it's like a busy day at the shop. It doesn't have to be in a bad way. It doesn't have to be negative, but just sometimes you just like overloaded with other people's energy. So this is for people who do that kind of work. Um, and so there's a lot of, I'm gonna roll my eyes as I say this because I hate to use this phrase, but high vibration, <laughs> high vibration oils in here. Um, very, um, um, you know, the types of oils that like a true Murafor would use, really anointing ritual oils. So there's mm -hmm. spikenard, in here and there's frankincense and myrrh and also um cypress and geranium and um you know more common things like vetiver there's also lemon balm in this um but um yes and i i personally um think that rosemary is one of the number one like priestess plants so um the herb of remembrance as we all know and um it's one of many herbs that has ties to Mother Mary or the Virgin Mary, but um, yeah. you know, I think all of us in here know that there are multiple incarnations that precede her that are associated with that blue veil and with that, you know, um, with priestessing and with being in service. I think with the compassionate, you know, someone who is um, in service to others. So. Yeah, so that's kind of what I had in mind with that one. So. Um, I've got Anne is looking for suggestions on improving dream connections. And Audrey, hey, Audrey, she's looking for recommendations to urge menopausal power surges, a.k.a. hot flashes. Yeah, um, there's actually, there are so many herbs. Um, there are many herbs that are indicated for um, menopausal um what's the word symptoms i guess for lack of a better word um so for something like that i would definitely want to have a more of a one-on-one -on -one chat um but um i know you know a lot of people like to work with um black cohosh for that but it, it doesn't always work for everybody um that is often the starting point um but there's also um, 
you know, Ayurvedic herbs, uh, adaptogens such as like Shisandra or um, Ashwagandha are sometimes indicated. But um, for specific advice, I would definitely want to, you know, go over your your personal uh, your personal specifics. Yeah. So hopefully that helps. And then um, for the question on dream connections, um, again, usually uh, the go-to herb for that is usually mugwort, but um, there are others that I think play well with mugwort. Um, I have a tea on my website, which is the divination blend. Um, and that one is predominantly mugwort. And it's not only for divination and ritual, but works well for dream work. Um, and that's also got lemon balm and lavender and also some lemon verbena and jasmine flowers. But um, I also think that sometimes mugwort combined with rosemary and or uh, wood betony can be very beneficial for dream work and dream recall. So, um, but other people really like working with hops um, or skull caps sometimes. So, um, you know, there's, the herbs are here for us. I don't know, the plants are here for us. And um, one thing that I always say, but uh, I'm certainly not the first herbalist to say this, is that um, the plants are like people. And um, they, in most cases, not all, but in most cases, they want to get to know us and they want us to get to know them. And you build a relationship um, with the plants in different ways that can be just drinking a tea from that plant every day or growing it. Um, if you can grow something, like I'm a big fan of that. Um, I'm, I'm a baby gardener. I, I, you know, I'm not in the desert anymore. So now um, I'm, I'm learning all of that. The previous owner of my house planted an amazing garden. So um, I'm lucky in that regard. But, uh, but yeah, so um, I guess I'm, what I'm trying to say is that there are multiple plants that will get you to your goal or help you to will walk that path with you and they will be your allies and your friends. Um, so it takes a little time sometimes to find your match. It's like dating. It is, you know, so when you and the plant both swipe right or whatever, you know, you'll, you'll know it. And, um, and that plant will tell you that plant will speak to you. So, um, and I don't doubt for a minute that everyone in this group uh, is already good at, you know, learning how to listen to that. So, yeah. So finding your plant ally, it's a really fun, fun journey. So That's great. So I just want to touch a little bit on um, you singing with another one of our sisters, uh, Randy Baker. And I don't know, God, was it last year, the year before, our first online um, Ninefold, Randy was the musical guest and um so how did you hook up with her and i'm hoping to get her at some point as a guest here on the coracle live so i'm just curious you know how that came to be and yeah oh my goodness she's so dear to my heart um i don't know if she's watching because she might not be on facebook right now but if you are watching randy i miss you um yeah so uh so Randy and I met through the belly dance community also oh. in Arizona. Yeah. And um, she took my classes. I was teaching um, like Gothic belly dance and we did all kinds of dark fusion and that's really my jam. Um, and then she started coming to me for private lessons. She wanted to do some solos. Um, Randy can spin like a hundred times and not get dizzy or fall down. So I can't, That's amazing. I can't even do it twice. I, <laughs> so, um, yeah, so it was cool. So I, I helped her work on some solos. Um, and uh, it just like, I don't know, we just became friends. And she encouraged me to get back into singing. Um, she started writing songs. So I guess, I don't know, while we were hanging out, um, we, I would talk to her about my spiritual path and Avalon and, and um, you know, the priestesses and, um, you know, we'd have tea and, and just talk about all of it. And um, she um, wanted to connect more with, uh, you know, the mother goddess, with the divine feminine and everything. So, um, 
she started writing songs about all of that. Um, I don't know if she started writing the songs before or after she went through orientation and also joined SOA, but um, she wanted um, to have more of a Celtic, probably more of a Celtic soprano sound than a classical soprano sound. So, um, but I, I guess I'm, I was close enough, so, you know, and we were such good friends. And so, um, yeah, I started singing um, back up for a lot of the songs um, that she wrote. And then she wrote um, Ariane Rod and um, I ended up singing that um, in all of our performances. Um, we, don't have, we don't have a good recording of me doing that. So, um, but she has a great recording of her singing it. So it's a different sound. Um, but yeah, so I sang that in like full on vibrato classical or whatever. And um, what else do we do? And then sometimes, and I, and I also play piano. So I would play for her. And so she, we kind of formed a little band for a while and it was called Mystic Sisters. And uh, yeah, we would do gigs out there at like, little rock and roll bars and coffee houses in Arizona and um, also at some of the local belly dance festivals out there. And then, you know, she wrote her whole album uh, about Avalon. So um, that was what she performed from end to yes. end for Ninefold. So, yeah. It was great. Yeah. I just um, love it. <laughs> we have a question from Ben. Hi, Ben. Uh, moving from different biomes, do you find the communities of plants are similar, even if the individuals of those population is different? Like are niches the same across biomes? There is some crossover, but not a lot from what I've seen. Um, the, and I will also say though, that the Phoenix area is much more specific than like, if you go up into Flagstaff or even, um, outside of Sedona by Oak Creek Canyon, you will find many plants there that also grow out here on the East Coast, um, like as well as Colorado. When I was up in uh, Colorado for that year in Ninefold, I was IDing stuff right and left that I would never normally see, at least not um, that wasn't cultivated um, in, in the Phoenix desert, um, the desert down there. But um, so yeah, for the most part, they're very, very different. Um, when I came out here, it was like, I, it was like a kid in a candy store kind of moment because all of the plants that I had studied in school for the most part, we learned a lot of desert plants out there too, but it was Western herbalism, of course. So I came out here and I was like, there's red raspberry leaf, there's partridge berry, there's red clover, everything. It was like, oh my God, they're real. <laughs> so, you know, I just go on a hike and see 10 plants that I, I you know, yeah. So, um, Sorry, I keep moving forward and I'm cutting myself off. No, that's okay. <laughs> I keep doing the same thing. Got to be comfortable. Yeah, so um, <clears throat> I would say they're mostly pretty different. Okay, so is, um, is there anything else that you would like to talk about? Well, let me look at my list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, um, <laughs> only, yeah, I'll just... Um, so yeah, so if you're anywhere near here in Western Mass, if you're in um, upstate New York or anywhere in, in New England, um, come visit me at the shop. That is um, open generally Tuesday through Saturday, 11 to six. Um, next Friday, we're having our first in-person event, which is uh, Full Moon Friday. So tickets for that are on Eventbrite. And uh, the ticket price includes tea and scones by my chef hubby and um, uh, a class and a ritual. So that's going to be fun. And I also teach classes on Patreon. I don't know if I mentioned that ever <laughs> before. So um, I do have a Patreon series. Um, that's the platform I'm using right now to teach herbalism classes. And um, <laughs> the class series this year is called the Path of the Plant Priestess. Um, I like alliteration. Um, it's Six, about 55 to 60 minutes of like the scientific side of herbalism and you know medicine making techniques identification um indications contraindications uh, you know herbal vocabulary and all of that 
And then um, in the last 15 minutes or so of class, we maybe do, like last time we talked about how to create um, like a protective, uh, like a mojo bag or a, a spell pouch for safe travel using comfrey and other items. Um, sometimes we do plant spirit meditations. Um, next month, the class is gonna be on a group. So right now I'm teaching like different groups of herbs for different purposes. So next month will be um, some of my favorite womb herbs. So um, we'll probably touch into um, uh, the concept of Mary Magdalene and womb work and um, you know, fun things like yoni steaming and stuff like that. So um, it's a little bit, it's a little bit of the uh, priestessy and witchy side at the end of class. Um, and that's once a month on Patreon. And then I, I'll do, you know, one-off classes as well here and there. Um, last year around Halloween time, I did some tea magic classes online. So that was fun. Um, I can, yeah, if we have extra time in a minute, I can teach you guys like a very easy tea magic routine um, if you want. And uh, yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Well, listen, does anybody else have any questions before we do? Little tea magic. If you do, pop it in the chat. And if not, we'll do some tea magic. Well, it looks like someone said, What's the name of your shop? So I'll put that in. Oh, someone answered. Oh, you answered. Okay. Yeah. I put in the name of the shop. Um, <laughs> Jenna put in your website and your Patreon. Thank you guys. Yeah. So, um, so tea magic. So the first part of tea magic is creating your blend. So um, maybe I can post to the SO, no, that will be good. I have a little handout that I sometimes give out or post that has lots and lots of correspondences, um, different herbs and you know what they are for magically. Um, so. I could, I would suggest making like a blog posting on yeah. the whole yeah. and, and post it there. Yeah, I can, I definitely can find a, a good spot to put that, but yeah. Um, but anyway, so let's say you've chosen your, um, your herbs and now I like to do, and it doesn't have to be herbs. You can use tea, like actual Camellia sinensis. If you don't mind it having some caffeine, you know, everybody reacts differently to that. So that's mm -hmm. cool. Like you could use green tea in a heart chakra blend, for example, that's kind of what the Beltane tea actually started off as was a heart chakra blend. Um, and so on. So you choose based on your magical intention. So let's say you've already done that. The quick and easy part that you could do almost any day is using one of your Oracle decks or tarot decks. And um, ideally, you would also want to have like a clear mug or bowl or teacup. Okay. Your glass. And all you do is um, you select now you could go one of two ways actually. You could intuit, you know, you could just uh, you know draw a card as if you were doing a reading, you know, not consciously choosing which card you get. Let spirit decide which card comes to you. Or what I like to do, if 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 my purpose is to set a certain intention, then I will choose whichever card matches best to my intention. So you can use our Avalonian Oracle that Jenna created, you can use a tarot deck if you prefer or whatever works for you. And you choose your card based on your intention and you're gonna slide that card underneath um, your teacup. So that's why ideally it should be clear. I don't even have a clear cup after all these years. So I just use like a plain one or whatever, it's fine. You know what's under there. So you're putting it under, and so the energies of that card, the idea is that it gets imbued into the tea and into the water energetically. Um, I like to think of, this actually all stemmed from the movie Frozen 2 because of Olaf saying water has memory. Um, I love that movie. Um, but yeah, and, um, and it really does. So the idea is that we're changing either changing the molecular structure of the water and of the tea, or at least imbuing it with the energy of that card and with your intention. And so from there, um, you can then, um, we like to do in some of my other Avalonian groups, we like to do nine minute meditations for the ninefold. Yeah. So you can do, 
if you want to set like a timer or you know sometimes people have meditation apps that they use so so you can do that and use that time maybe while your tea even is steeping into the water or whatever to focus and to you know ground let go of your conscious mind do your do your thing do your magic do your spell work and in and you can chant into the water i really lately like to use voice as part of like water magic and tea magic and air magic and combine that so the vibrations of the words that you're saying or the chant or whatever you're singing you can sing a song and that, that gets in there too and so all of that then it gets into your tea let's say in those nine minutes or even less if you have less time and then when you drink it that seals the spell and you can just say so mode it be or it is done or whatever you like so and that can you can make that ritual more elaborate or even more simple mm -hmm. however you want so that's lovely thank thank you for sharing that with us yeah so before we and is there anything else you'd like to touch on? I don't know. <laughs> I think that basically is it. Yeah. Okay. That's great. We have, we're just about out of time. So that's wonderful. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah, for having well, me. thank you so much for doing this. It's been great. And uh, I am going to drive up to the store. I'm not in Western Mass. I'm in Southern Mass. But I will definitely take a ride up as the weather gets warmer so I can, you know, see your store. And uh, so thank you again. And thank you, everyone, for um, joining us. I would um, let you know that our next chat is on Friday, May 6th. And I will be speaking with Alicia Grasso, also known as Bun, and uh, that should prove to be great. She's very talented, soap maker, and all sorts of stuff. So, um, Suzanne, thank you very much. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you. And thank you to everyone, and hopefully we'll see you in the beginning of May. Good night, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye.